thank you, Raphael. And thank you, Carol Rusover. Harvey Milk, whatever he would want to say tonight is, whenever you gather in my name, be damn sure you're political. Because his life and his death were about politics. And to understand the challenges of the next century, we must always make those connections. I was up here asked to give a speech as the only speaker representing Harvey that first night. And it was the toughest gig of my life. I don't remember what I said, but I do remember what I felt. I do remember, and I know, how many of you were there that night? Good for you. I do remember the sense of power and the sense of community that was in that place. Harvey had talked to me a lot about death. And I think to understand his politics and his sense of where our movement needed to go, his closeness to the experience of death is maybe the most single important consideration. I remember he told me once that the reason there was so much crazy support for the death penalty was because so many Americans saw black experience as threatening to them and were willing to respond to that experience with incarceration and with death. And he said the same thing about homophobia, that behind the denial of our rights, there was a sense that our lives were so threatening to the normalcy and the narrow-mindedness and the superficiality of American culture that they were willing and wishing that we would not exist. That connection between politics and death and life and hope was the very essence of what Harvey Milk was all about. In the 70s, we were in an era of gay rights politics. And it troubled Harvey that in trying to fight for our rights, sometimes people would, would deny our anger and our, our pissed offness because of the mistaken notion that if we would behave ourselves, that the good liberal people of this country would come to love and respect us. Nothing made Harvey angrier than that kind of thinking because he understood that what the people wanted from queers was for us to get the hell out of the country. Harvey tried to prepare us for his death. And I think for a lot of us, November 27th, 1978, we realized in a very special way how brilliantly his preparation had been. That preparation was tested by the HIV epidemic, which would have torn at Harvey's heart as nothing else could and conceivably could have. But what showed us again as, as young people faced death with courage and integrity, what an extraordinary thing it can be to be queer when you acknowledge who you are and accept the realities of life. And, and, but, and, when, and, and when you realize that those who would deny our rights and deny our existence and will our death are fearful people whose narrow-minded inability to accept the truth about what it means to be a human being disqualifies them from the joy and the power of accepting who you are and standing up against those who would deny what your life is all about. That, that was our Harvey. I know that day, November 27, 1978, was a day of enormous pain and loss. But I don't remember all that. We were giving up on the idea that Harvey's life was going to take us to newer and newer heights. And suddenly had to consider the possibility that his death might be what ultimately set the stage for what was to come next. I think we left this place on that night and faced the future, not saying, oh my God, we're lost because we lost Harvey, but realizing gradually that in the gift of his death, Harvey had offered us a kind of power and a kind of community that even he perhaps could not have fully expected. God, how we love this man and how he loved us and how proud he would be of all those who have in his name gone forward to fight for social justice, 
for queer empowerment and for a better future for all of us. Thank you.